Okay, now mine. Okay. In 1957, I was a pilot in the Air Force working at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory. I'd come up with an idea I called tree memory and had written a program on the IBM 709 to test it. Being a beginner in computer science, I had no idea as to whether or not it was a new idea. Friends at Lincoln suggested that I discuss the idea with John McCarthy, who was known to be working with list structures. I went to John's MIT office in Building 26, and I was told that I might find John down the hall. Down the hall, I saw someone walking slowly, apparently thinking about something, and I walked up to him and said, are you John McCarthy? I introduced myself and told him that I'd programmed and tested an idea for a data structure for information storage and retrieval, and I was trying to find out if it was an original concept. John took my paper and started to read it. While reading it, he turned around and slowly started walking away from me. I didn't know what that meant, so I just stood there. After about 15 or 20 steps, John slowly turned around and started walking back towards me. When he was close, he stopped walking and continued reading. It was obvious to me that he was annoyed by what he was reading. Meanwhile, I just stood there perplexed. Finally, John got to the end and he thrust the paper back into my hands and said, Yes, I've had the same idea, but I didn't think to write it up. <laughs> okay. I see, so aside from you, do you think it's a new idea, I said. And he said, as far as I know, yes it is. John quickly got over being annoyed and assured me that I'd done some good work, and that was typical of John. After getting to know him, I discovered that he was teaching a course about computation. I decided to sit in on some of his lectures at MIT. As a result, I was fortunate at fortunate enough to attend a fascinating lecture. John was discussing an open question about theoretically proving facts about a program. While giving his lecture, John had an idea as to how one might prove what was known to be a difficult open question. He deviated from his planned lecture in the course of the next 30 minutes. With a couple of long pauses while staring at the blackboard, John managed to essentially complete the proof. I was thrilled to have wit witnessed all this. However, as we filed out of the classroom, I overheard a student angrily say, telling a classmate, he has a lot of nerve coming to class unprepared. <laughs> After I went to work at BBN, I convinced Licklider, who was my boss, that uh, we should hire both Marvin Minsky and John McCarthy as consultants. While working with John at BBN, I told him about my idea that perhaps the universe is a program in some kind of computer. John's reply was, yes, I've had that same idea. <laughs> I asked, do you think there might be some way to test that theory? Yes, said John. We could do experiments to see if we can detect round-off or truncation errors. That tipped me off that John's concept and mine were somewhat different. Looking for advice, I asked, do you think I should keep working on these ideas? John thought for a while, and then he said, yes, the world is large enough to afford one person working on such ideas. <laughs> John developed a set of concepts that allowed a large multi-million dollar mainframe computer to be shared by a number of different users who could all simultaneously interact with the computer via some kinds of primitive terminals. He called it time sharing. As John explained his ideas to me, it was obvious that they made sense. Somehow we had to implement his concept. <clears throat> it was fascinating and frustrating for me to discover that very few people went along with John's ideas, while others vigorously opposed them. Being a hardware designer, I thought of ways to quickly and cheaply design and build the hardware necessary to demonstrate the validity of John's concepts. My favorite was John's rule that the computer should always respond to simple user actions in less than a tenth of a second. Back then, turnaround time with batch processing was often 24 hours. In 1962, Marv Minsky, John, and I went to a meeting about timesharing held in Santa Monica. And after John, afterwards, John told us that he was planning to quit MIT and hoped to get a position at Caltech. MIT hadn't promoted John, leaving him as an assistant professor. Marvin and I decided to go with John to Caltech, providing transportation and moral support. We waited around until John finished the interview. 
Caltech wasted no time in telling John that they weren't interested. So John told us he was going to try Stanford next, while Marvin and I returned to Massachusetts. Thank God for Stanford. <laughs> they really did the right thing. OK, John and I both had lots of contacts in the Soviet Union, and we both discovered that we could sometimes influence events in Russia. We also shared an optimistic view that the communist governments might someday be able to transition into democracies. Those feelings got a big boost in 1968 when Czechoslovakia began the so-called Prague Spring, socialism with a human face. John asked me if we could meet and talk privately. Getting directly to the point, John said, I'm considering moving to Russia. As John explained his thoughts, I argued with him using every fact and every bit of logic I could muster. An argument with John was polite yet difficult because he was such a powerful and logical thinker. Finally, I got him to agree to something less radical. Instead of doing anything permanent, he agreed to simply arrange for an extended visit to Akadem Gorodok, the Soviet science city near Novosibirsk. Okay, but as Russia prepared to invade Czechoslovakia, John sent an urgent telegram to Moscow threatening to cut off his planned stay in the USSR if they f used force to terminate the Prague Spring. If I had been running the Soviet Union, given the choice of either John McCarthy or Czechoslovakia, I would have gone with John. <laughs> The next year, when I decided to teach an MIT course in problem solving, John offered to think up problems for my students. A good example is one called The Doctor's Dilemma, which can be found on John's website. The other problem that was mentioned about the birthday uh, uh, when the U.S. was 200 years old in 1976, he also thought that one up for my class. Okay, in 1985, I told John that I'd had some unusual discussions uh, uh, about the Sakharov situation during a visit to the USSR. John somehow managed to connect with Vice President Bush in the Reagan administration and relayed my story. The eventual result, precipitated by John's call, was the yet sort of untold story as to how the U.S. was finally able to influence Russia into freeing Andrei Sakharov from exile in Gorky. In my opinion, John McCarthy was a brilliant American hero. He had the greatest combination of theory and practicality of anyone. He often saw the future clearly and then played a role in creating the future as he saw it. I treasure both Adventures we shared. And some silly misadventures we accidentally precipitated. Most important to me was 55 years of friendship. <laughs>